boys, you know, kind of boys, a boys around about the same age as me, um, maybe a year or so older, um, in sort of a housing estate, a housing scheme that I grew up in. Um, and due to trauma in my own life when I was young, I was instantly attracted to it. Um, it let me, drugs let me be somebody that I couldn't be in my own personal life because, um, again, because of trauma. Growing up, I was, um, can always wanted to be somebody else and I found that through um, drugs. Um. You know, I don't, we'll maybe get off the, the script here a wee bit, but w what kinds of drugs did it lead on to and how long did this drug use last, Ronnie? It lasted around 30 years. Um, I ended up um, getting through all drugs. I mean, all the, the sort of, in, in the early days when I was young, kind of the party drugs, sort of ecstasy, um, you know, kind of snorting cocaine, amphetamines, LSD, magic mushrooms, stuff like that. Um, and I continued to use drugs and because I was involved in the criminal aspect and, and, and stuff like that, it wasn't long before I was introduced to, um, you know, kind of bigger, bigger dealers who pushed um, heroin. So, um, again, I sort of, um, I tried it and took it like a duck to water. So, um, 30 years and for the last 20 years of that, I was, on, I was on a methadone script for 19 years and um, I just couldn't stop using drugs on top of it. I was using heroin, I was injecting cocaine, a lot of illicit diazepam, um, just whatever was available, John. What's interesting is you, you're, you're a fair bit younger than me, but I look at the teenagers now and they're obviously younger than you. So when we talk about uh, drug use and the teenagers now, what's changed since you were young? Um, now, availability, um, the range, and, uh, you, you know, the cost as well. I mean, um, when I was young, drugs were kind of, they, they, they weren't hard to come by, but they cer certainly weren't as uh, uh, freely available as they are at the moment. Um, and uh, if you look at maybe like inflation, um, drugs have always, you know, they, they've been kind of below the rate of inflation, so heroin, you know, illicit street diazepam, they're all, they're all so cheap that um, they're freely available, you know, um, and what we've got is, um, what we've got is, um, in, the, in Garfield City Centre you can access drugs, you know, anywhere, you know what I mean, um, and people don't care about age, colour, creed, anything. How much are these things, you say cheap, how much are, how much are drugs? How much are drugs? Mm. Um, well, obviously, I, I can't comment in uh -huh. on how much it, it costs to make them, um, but certainly to buy them. Um, so, like, so, you know, 20, 30 illicit diazepam tablets cost you £10, you know, um, their own £10 bags. When I was growing up, people were actually making £5 bags, so it was, it, it was more affordable. It, you know, it, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's cheaper than booze. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, and I think that's what, what happened, see when minimal, pr uh, minimum pricing came in, mm. what it did is it just push, um, push drug use because um, for your £10, you know, for your £10 you're getting, you're getting a few cans or you're getting a back to the Scoop Valley and that will um, keep you under the influence for probably a couple of days. What do you think, and you talked about um, taking drugs to feel like yeah, you're, you're somebody, and probably, you know, to do to do with the crowd and being part of the crowd. When you look at young people, and you obviously can't speak for all young people, but why is it you think youngsters take drugs? Um, I suppose there's many reasons, John. There's, um, I mean, there's peer pressure. There's um, I, again, like I said, trauma. Um, growing up with, with trauma issues, um, and uh, you know, that's a lot of the people that can I work with. It, it's, you know, it's trauma that led them to um, their drug use. Uh, there's other reasons, I mean, lately a lot of, you know, kids now are injecting steroids, they're injecting um, tannin, you know, ta they're taking tannin injections or, or, put, or taking slimming medication. So so that's just another pressure that's added to them through I would say, watching shows like um, Love Island, you know, really? where everybody is beautiful, you know, so... Perfect. Aye, yeah, so, so there's many different reasons young people take drugs. Can we end on, I just want to ask you, 
how you gave them up when you finally thought, no, not for me. What was that moment? What happened? I got into a, a, a service um, uh, through criminal justice involvement. Um, I get asked to get into a service, sort of keep me at the courts. And when I went in there, um, I was kind of, I was, I was at, at, you know, I was, I spent every day wondering how, how I was still alive, John. So um, when I got this chance, you no, know, I grabbed it with both hands. Um, I went from there to, to long-term residential rehab. Uh, and then afterwards, you know, did a lot of voluntary work and a lot of sort of fellowship recovery meetings in order to, you know, to get the tools that I needed to um, stay um, abstinent to alcohol and drugs. Ronnie, listen, I appreciate you talking to me and, and being uh, honest and frank. Thank you so much. OK, John, thank you. OK, well, that was Ronnie Hart talking pretty directly about his experience with drugs. Let's talk to Katie McLeod, who's a National Training and Development Officer at Scotland's Drug Forum. Good afternoon, Katie. Good afternoon, John. Do you know what got me about that was, uh, one, the honesty, two, how young, you know, 11 years old is young or is it not young? Yes, indeed. It is young and I think um, in many ways we've seen that shift to like those kind of age ranges that maybe was, you know, if we go back 